Hey guys, it's Parker Doman, the Longhorn Engineer, and today we're going to look at the Open Bench Logic Sniffer. This is basically an open source logic analyzer. A logic analyzer is a basically just a digital version of oscilloscope, so you can only view ones and zeros on the signal. But it's very useful in debugging microcontrollers, which is actually what this is really good for. Um, it has a sampling, it can sample signals up to 50 megahertz, so if you're using an Arduino or a uh, propeller, this is perfect because b both of those will basically fall into a readable range that this thing can sample at. Um, it runs has 32 channels, 16 of which come pre-soldered on right here. It has 16 more right here. Important note though is that uh, the 16 channels over here are 5 volt tolerant and buffered. Whereas these are not, in the, so they're only 3.3 volt tolerant and not buffered. So if you apply more than 3.3 volts to these pins over here, you will probably fry the logic sniffer. Um, I think uh, Dangerous Prototypes, which, who are the designers of this board, uh, I think they do make a kit, add-on kit, that makes these buffered. I don't. I don't recall how much that is, but it's probably a worthwhile investment if you need more than 16 channels. For most microcontroller work though, you only need the 16 channels over here. I actually only use 8 channels most of the time. So it's USB compatible and uh, you basically take these leads right here and you wire them up to your project. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I have it all wired up. I have the USB plugged into my laptop and I have it hooked up to my RGB uh, PWM switch. It's a WS2108 which uh, basically the propeller is going to send 24 bits of data via serial connection and then um, that's it and that will control this LED that's right back there. Um, you can tell it's hooked up, the uh, logic analyzer is hooked up. These two pins, one is clock, which is channel zero, and channel one is the uh, data. And then this guy is ground. So to make sure that the logic sniffer knows what ground is, you connect the grounds between the two devices. And so to run it, it's as simple as booting up the software that comes with it. It uses Sump, which is a open source uh, program for logic analyzers. And so what you're going to do is click this guy that says, uh, I think it says start sniffing or start, start uh, capture. So you got to select your port. And I only have one device connected, it's COM4. You don't need to change the port speed. Uh, so now you've got to change your sampling right here. Um, it samples up to 100 megahertz, which means you can capture a 50 megahertz in, uh, system. Now the propeller has a clock speed of 80 megahertz, but since it takes four cycles per instruction on average, it's actually running at 20 megahertz. So we can probably get away setting it to, if you'll actually, there you go to 20 megahertz because if I'm flipping a pin I can flip a pin at about 10 megahertz rate on average so you can see that and then I'm only using the first eight uh, channels so I'm going to turn off those and hit this automatic recording size so that way it uses the most amount of RAM uh, to store the data the more channels you use, the less time you get to record, basically. Same thing with sampling. Like the more, the faster you sample at, the less time you get to sample for. And I'm going to leave noise filter off and the run length encoding. I don't know what that does. but So I'm going to enable what's called triggering. 
So triggering means that it's going to wait until something happens, then start recording, which is very useful when uh, you, you're just sending a couple bits, like 24 bits at a time. So we're going to use type simple, and then there's this mask down here. Now the mask means these are the channels that the uh, logic analyzer is going to look at for the trigger. And so since channel 0 is our clock, so right when it starts clocking in the data, it'll start recording it. And so this bottom is the value. Blank is 0 and uh, checked is 1. So we're going to have it checked because it clocks in on the high clock value my program does. So we're going to hit capture. And so it's going to start waiting. So we're going to come over here. I'm going to turn on the propeller. And it'll start reading in the data. And there we go. So you can tell this is our clock. And then here is our uh, waveform. And you can tell we didn't quite capture all the clocks. So we're going to go back to this button. We we'll start capturing data. Go back to the acquisition. Change it to 10 megahertz. And then hit capture. And it's going to wait. And then we're just going to hit the reset button on the propeller. And there we go. So that's got all our clocks in. All 24 clocks. And then it's got this is the red data, so I'm shifting it all ones for red. I'm shifting in part zero, partially zeros and partially ones for the green, and uh, partially zeros and partially ones for the blue. And you can tell it makes a, I don't know if you can tell, but it makes like a kind of a magenta color at the RGB LED down there. For $50, this is a very good piece of kit. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of features like more professional uh, logic analyzers that I've used before but for the beginner or hobbyist this is a perfect thing for low-level microcontroller work like uh, the MSP 430s or uh, propellers and Arduinos um, the, it's actually pretty easy to use most logic analyzers I've used are a little bit difficult in the uh, software. This is actually one of the easiest ones I've used. Um, I actually do have two complaints. The clips over here are a little crappy. I mean, you just flick them and they'll pop off. And it doesn't have a lot of RAM in that FPGA for recording. Um, as you saw earlier, I had to change the sampling rate down just to capture 24 bits of data. Um, so if you have really, really high speed connections, uh, you'll probably have to buy a more expensive uh, logic analyzer. The, I'm going to assume the reason why this thing doesn't have a lot of RAM is because they're a $50 budget for this board. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, the next step up is, you know, spending $150 to $200 on a logic analyzer. But so for $50, this does exactly what it needs to do. Um, I would recommend anyone that does extensive Arduino or microcontroller work to definitely pick this up from Dangerous Prototypes. I picked mine up for $50 at uh, Seed Studio. And I don't know if anyone else sells them, but definitely pick it up. See y'all later, guys.